I'm installing Ignition. This is 100% fresh install of Ignition. I wanted to show this completely from scratch. In case you're not familiar with Ignition, this should give you a sense of how you would get started if you were looking at using either the event-based historian over uh, SQL Bridge, uh, over the transaction groups that we have built into Ignition or the tag historian. Uh, and so I'm just going to click through the install right here. And it's installing on my local system. Ignition, of course, installs on uh, cross operating systems. So it can be Linux, Windows, Mac OS. Uh, and then if you're talking about accessibility of Ignition, uh, it's accessible from whatever is on the local network and um, or, or whatever has access to the Ignition gateway. And that could be local desktops. Uh, that could be tablets and phones. We have an app uh, if you're using the perspective module. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, that's cross-platform too on individual desktops. So Windows, Mac, OS X, um, and Linux. Uh, and I'm just saying I agree to the terms and conditions. This is the commissioning. So if you've never seen Ignition installed before, uh, surprise, Ignition's installed. Uh, it's that fast, it's that easy. Uh, and it is up, it's on my system, and now it's going through its startup phase. The startup phase is pretty quick as well here. Um, and so as soon as it's done, it's going to take me to the Gateway homepage, and I can go through configuration if I want to, or I can start with a quick start project that is uh, basically a mode that sets up a few simulation devices and a few simulation items behind the scenes uh, so that I don't have to connect directly to devices here. Uh, so I think I'll go ahead and do that. I think I'll say yes to the quick start mode, uh, which has those tags. So when I go into the Ignition Designer and event it, I'll see some tags that are auto-created for me that are just example tags here. If you didn't have that quick start mode, uh, then, or, or if you said no to it, then the steps there to get access to tag data is generally just connecting to devices uh, or connecting to other sources, uh, connecting to OPC servers. Um, and those are connections are made directly from the Ignition Gateway web pages. Uh, and so you can go to device and under the device section there, um, then you can go into um, to set up the specific device connections with IP addresses and things like that. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to say, yes, I want to enable quick start. It's the first thing it prompts me for. Of course, we have uh, security just about everywhere inside Ignition. Security is very important for the industries that Ignition is in. Um, and so we're in a lot of critical infrastructure. We're in a lot of uh, places that do power distribution and oil and gas. And uh, we, are, we, we take that very, very seriously. And so we have a whole variety of security standards that are built into place. Uh, we can certainly uh, answer questions on that, or you can take a look later. Uh, we have a security hardening guide and some other things. Uh, but I'm going to come in. Uh, I'm going to connect up. So I'm going to connect to a database, create a new database connection right here. And I happen to have Microsoft SQL Server already installed here. I have a completely empty blank database uh, that I called demo here that I set up. So you'd be able to see what this looks like going uh, completely fresh, as I said. So I'll type in my credentials and give it the database name right here uh, for demo. And that'll connect up there. And then I did set up another uh, database that has a few things in it already. Uh, and this would be an example of if Ignition's connecting out to a separate enterprise uh, system that has data that you can show inside Ignition if you, care, if you care about that or if you want to have that in dashboards. And I'll connect to that as well right here. And this is in a database called Ignition. All right, so I'm all set. I'm connected up and I'm going to hit the button to get the designer. And this is going to download the designer for Windows in my case. Uh, this is the designer launcher, and I'll minimize this. This is a separate application that is now installing. It can be installed system-wide or just for my user. And in this case, I am launching it up, and I'll see the um, configuration. It automatically detects my local ignition gateway here that I have, and that's what it adds, and I'll connect up. 
Now it is launching right here. And pop over here. And this is the sample quick start project that I was talking about. Um, I won't actually use this project. I'll just do a fresh project. Um, I'll call this demo and pop down. Uh, I'll give it a database that I'm connecting to, which will be this database that I just set up that's completely blank, empty, available. And then I'll give it a project template and I'll come in and um, this will give me a little bit of uh, menu uh, just by default when I open things up. So it's launching up and it runs through and it starts the modules. And then as soon as it's done there, we'll see the designer. If you've never seen the designer before, uh, it's basic design environment that allows for tag configuration. It allows for screen design. It allows for reporting. It allows for alarming. Um, pretty much everything that's built into Ignition as features is what you can do in the designer. And a quick orientation in the upper left here, these are the different major sections of Ignition. You'll see me clicking around in the project browser here. And as I click to the different sections, you can see the rest of the screen adjusts appropriately. Um, so these are different design environments. Basically, the, the whole designer houses all of this. Uh, and then these are different workspaces for each one of the different uh, features, major features that we have here. So what I'm going to do is pop down to my tags. I can see all of these sample tags that are available from my quick start. And I'm not going to keep you waiting here. Uh, what you want to see, I know, is uh, first tag history. Um, so I'll come over to our home page. Um, and this is this is just one of the home welcome pages. And what I will do right here is I'll take all of these tags, every single tag that I see here. Um, I'm going to select them right there. And I will edit these tags. Come down and tell it to store history. So let's say store history true. Give it a database I want to store it to. I could store it to internal as well. I could store it to anything that I have as an option here. So I'll go to a database um, and I'll go to this new fresh demo database that doesn't have anything in it. And now on my screen, so, so that's it, by the way. So there is now history being stored for everything that you see there. So I'm going to throw what we call an easy or a power chart in this case onto the screen right here. And I'll shrink this down so you can see it a little bit better, expand this out. You'll notice that it automatically scales as I do things. Um, and uh, open up the tag browser inside demo. I now have all of these different tags that I just stored right there. And I can add whatever I want. Maybe I'll pull in things that are intended to be fairly realistic here, right? So we hit add tags. And I will say, give me tags for the last eight minutes instead of the last eight hours. Or I'll even drop that down. So tags for the last minute. Those are real values coming in, being stored to the historian uh, with really two clicks. I <laughs> just had to pick the tag history. Um, say yes, and then I had to point it at something, tell where I wanted it to go. And that's all tag history. Inside this component, there's a variety of things that I can do. So I have a range brush. I can select a specific range. It's going to give me information about that range in addition to information about the, the pins. So I can see min, max for a certain period of time, see standard deviation for what I've just selected. Um, I can select multiple of these and I get multiple different um, groupings uh, for each one of those time windows. Uh, if that's what I'm interested in, I can um, get rid of the individual range brushes if I want to. I can also set up uh, monitoring that's just going to hold at whatever point that I uh, set it up right there. So those are all the values that I have coming through. Uh, and then I can set up annotations as well. I could um, put a note here. That's going to um, say something happened. Hopefully, I'm going to be a little bit more clear than that when I <laughs> when I put in real notes uh, or when an operator did. Uh, but you can get the idea that that's how those work. I'll clear my X trace just to be able to see that a little better. And so this is the tag historian uh, tied into the power chart inside perspective. Perspective is the 
module that allows us to run things inside a web browser. So I could pop this up relatively easily into a web browser itself. If I hit launch session right here, we can see this now running inside my web browser along with some other um, options there along the side. You can see my annotation moving past my time window right there over the last minute um, and some of these values going. Taking a quick look at the time, I will show you what the event historian, um, some basics of how that looks. I don't know if I'll have time to build out the full dashboard that I was thinking about doing, um, but I'll come over here and pop that up and go over to the transaction groups. These transaction groups allow you to store history however you want to. So I'm going to go and create a new uh, transaction group and I will call this uh, maybe a fill log. I've got something that's filling and emptying and filling and emptying. And to find a good tag to use for that, I'll actually pop over here first and, um, and take a look at some of my values that, that I have inside the historian itself. So if I take a look at my demo, um, I believe that some of these sign values um, are going up and down and I could trigger based on those uh, changes that are happening. So I'll clear out some of these other values and then we can zoom in on the sign values that we have. And I'll make this so it's the last, uh, I don't know, five minutes. All right, and then we get values here. So these are, these are different sign and if I go here I can see that that's 32, 6, and 5 right there. Um, so it looks like sign 7 is a good one that keeps going up and down about once a minute it seems like. So maybe I'll use that as a trigger and I'll say that this is going to be every time that it exceeds a certain amount then I'm going to count that as a completion. This is one cycle that it's gone through. So I'll come right over here to my uh, charts that I had right there to my transaction groups, to this history uh, now, and then I'll come down to sign seven and I'll pull that right in here. Say, I just wanna use this uh, for reading and I'll use this as the trigger. So I'll evaluate it when the uh, values have changed. Um, sign seven, I'm going to execute once when the trigger is active and I'll say it's active anytime that it's over 25. Um, and I think that should capture it pretty well that it's exceeding, it's getting up to the top right there. I can set this up so it's reevaluating it every second to see if it's exceeded that point. And then of course, when that happens, I wanna log some stuff with it. So I will store my timestamp. I will say, um, this is my events uh, time. I'll store an index and I'll say, this is my event ID right here. Um, and then this is going into a table and I'll call this my fill log. I might want to store some other information alongside it. Uh, and so I could take any tag value that I have here and give it specific uh, names. So I'll go into, um, this will be a database column and um, I can rename it here. And I'll say, this is going to be amps uh, that's coming in. Uh, maybe I have a motor that's being used for this filling. And so I'm logging the amps for that. I've got another one that's right here. Uh, that could be some sort of uh, temperature. And then I could have another one uh, that's going to be, uh, I don't know, something else environmental, uh, humidity, let's say. So I can hit save right there. Take a look at that. And now this is set up. Uh, it doesn't have any executions yet. Uh, nothing has happened that has caused it to trigger, uh, but we can see that sign seven right now is negative 24, negative 23. Uh, and as soon as this jumps past where the trigger is happening there, that um, 25, the positive 25, uh, then we're going to get an execution of this group. And when we get that execution, uh, we should be able to see it here in a few seconds. That's going to put a record into our database table uh, that we set up right here. So we just called it fill log, right? And that's going to go into the default data source. That default data source um, before the moment of 25 didn't have anything inside it. And now you can see that it has a fill log. And in fact, if I click right here, uh, I can see the values just come through. So that just triggered right as soon as I went past 25. 
in another minute from now or however long it takes to drop back down and then go back up over 25, we'll get another record. And so you can start to see how this can work where you get these individual records into the database. And then of course, if you want to see these records and you want to do things with these records, um, they can go into individual screens, into uh, dashboards. Um, and the simplest way to show this is simply to have a query that pulls those in. So I'll create a new blank query. I'll call this my uh, fill log query. Uh, and then under authoring, I can just pick it over here. I can open a query builder and say my fill log, and I want to include my event ID maybe, um, amps, temperature, humidity, and my event time. I'm basically selecting everything. I'll hit okay right there. I can hit testing, execute that. I can see this information comes back. There's one record, but there will soon be two records. Uh, and then I'll come back over to my visuals here. I will drop into my visuals a, um, a table component. So I'll, I'll steal this one. This is uh, normally my alarm screen. You can see I have a few alarms pre-configured, but I will co-opt it and I'm going to drop a table right here on the screen. And inside this table, I will show information that's coming back from that. So I'm going to take my data property right here, simply bind it straight up to my query, point it at that fill log that I just set up. And there, now we have two records. Um, those have just happened. And if I had a little bit more time here, um, and we would be happy to do this or show this to you if you called us later and you wanted a demo, um, but I can set this up pretty easily where I click on this um, and then it would filter my alarm or my, my chart history based on the events that I've selected. So I could have a start time, I could have an end time that's associated with it as well. And then right below this, it's very easy to have additional components. I could have another power chart that's sitting right down below this that's showing different things. I could also have a more complex screen that maybe has a gauge that's associated with it that has whatever these values are shown right alongside it in a nice visual dashboard type of way. You could have things that um, have a map that's associated with this that's connected up to these different events that are here inside the log. Um, this log will automatically refresh at whatever rate is set here. Um, and so I could pull at something other than a default rate or I could pull at 30 seconds or five seconds um, and you know, in a minute or uh, 30 seconds or whatever a new record comes through. Um, we'll see that automatically fill out inside the table. Uh, and then of course, it's relatively easy to set up a, a date selection or set it up where maybe you double click on one of these rows and it pulls up all the associated information there um, that's tied to the date range that is uh, here. So we just saw record three pop in right there. Deploying is as easy as clicking the save button and taking a look over here. Now, if I go to alarms, I see this. This is streaming real time back from the database. Um, with whatever I just set up right there.